headquarters. Run out the gun. Stand by this tavern battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Lint stops ready. Fire is all ready. Fire! Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's indomitable man of the sea, Horatio Hornblower. Sometimes seems a little difficult, or I might even say arduous, to live ashore. Especially when your lovely wife, your adored recent bride, rather expects you to become a country gentleman. Well, life is made up of change, they say, but for an old sea dog, new tricks come harder than for other breeds, I think. Well, there I was, not long returned from confinement in France as the unwelcome guest of Bonaparte, granted a knighthood, happily married to my enchanting Lady Barbara. Free of all financial cares at last, and yet, and yet, so, yes, I knew it for my fault, but somehow, there in the quiet English countryside, I hadn't quite come home as yet. Ooh, ooh, bar water, sir. Oh, heaven forbid, it's mostly on the deck, the, the floor already, isn't it? Ah, oh, tin tub the size of a teapot. There's a fine way for a grown man to bathe himself. Yeah, all right. I've had enough. Give me that towel, Brown. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What a ridiculous contrivance. Give me a wash deck pump and gallons of cold seawater. Remember, Brown? Oh, I remember, sir, Horatio. Belay that, sir, Horatio. Old terms are good enough, aren't they, you idiot? Yes, sir. It's a lovely morning, sir. Is it? Oh, yes. Yes, I suppose so. Mm. Still and quiet. Very quiet. It's queer. When I wake here, I still keep listening to the... Sounds, rattle of blocks, the cordage wheezing, and... Oh, well, never mind. I've laid out your new suit, sir. Oh, well, let's get it on. You mustn't keep Lady Barbara waiting downstairs for her breakfast. <laughs> Welcome to the new squire of Smallbridge. Now, oh, you're laughing at me. You know perfectly well, Barbara, how I felt about that insufferable ceremony yesterday, sir. Squire, indeed. Oh, I do know, my dear, and you were sweet. Suffering it all without complaint. Mm -hmm. Only the faintest glare of defiance now and then during the speech-making. <laughs> Coffee, dear? Thank you. Well, what do we have planned today? I thought that you and I might drive across the Downs this morning. Uh-huh. Of course, you said you had a lot of reading you'd been putting off. Gibbon, well, was it? Well, yes. I, uh, yes, I do want to get at that. It's, um, <clears throat> yes, quite soon, in fact. A letter for you, Horatio. Oh, oh, thank you, Wiggins. The messenger is waiting, my lord. He is from the Admiralty in London. The Admiralty? The Admiralty, eh? Darling, it... It couldn't be... Yeah, listen to this. The Lord's Commissioners request that I present myself at once. A uh, matter of extreme importance which cannot even be discussed except in... Uh, hey, Wiggins, where's Brown? Tell him to get out my best uniform and sword. Tell him to pack my things for the night. And look, tell him that... You're I... going to London right away? Well, my love, the letter says at once. Remember, we're still at war with Bonaparte. Now, off with you, Wiggins. Uh, tell Brown I'll be upstairs immediately. And I want him to drive me. We we'll take the chariot. I wished I didn't need to look at her just then. 
After the first surprise, she would try so hard to appear calm and and pleased that I was pleased. I, I hadn't been quite frank with her, perhaps. To be exact, the letter asked whether or not I would accept a new appointment. I, I didn't know what to say to Barbara, but... Oh, my dear, it's merely for the night. I'll be back in the morning, um, whatever this amounts to. Yes, for a day or so, perhaps. Oh, just look at you, brazen child. Excited as a midshipman. It's breaking over you in waves. Do you suppose I don't see it? Oh, my dear, when, well, when the Admiralty itself, I, I, I must at least find out. I know what you'll find out. Wild horses couldn't hold you now, of course. Do you know how long we've lived here at Smallbridge? Why, I... Two months. Two months tomorrow, I... <laughs> oh, dearest, I've always known. Retirement simply isn't in your line. It's a great honor to be recalled so soon. You must be pleased. And I am, too. If they, um, if they appointed me a, a, a commodore, well, they might, you know. Well, well, if they did, I, I might have to go back to sea again. Darling, we've been married six whole months. A wonderful half year. I've had that much of happiness with you. And whatever happens, you'll come back to me. I know you will. Of course I will. Oh, Barbara, Barbara, I swear you, you're a woman in 10,000. She was, you know. In all my life, I'd said no truer word than that, I told myself as we drove up to London. Well, we made excellent time. Brown knew his business with horses. I never understood the peculiar beast. Now, Brown was good at everything. Best captain's coxswain in the Navy, and, and now the perfect manservant. Still, I rather thought he mightn't mind going back to sea again. There was a queer look in his eye, especially when we drew up before the Admiralty in Whitehall and I was ushered into the First Lord. Sit down, sit down, Captain Horatio. Well, Thanks, well. Left your newfound domestic bliss behind, eh, when you uh -huh. received our letter? Well, may I ask what it is you have in mind for me, sir? Of course you may. The Baltic, Horatio. The Baltic? Is Russia coming into the war, then? Who knows? I wish I did. That very question's at the heart of this whole project. Uh -huh. Our letter did say, didn't it, that you'd take rank as Commodore uh -huh. with a Captain Undio. You have six ships. The Nonsuch, 74, a ship of four. The Nonsuch? I know her well, sir. Both the Russian Tsar and Prince Bernadotte of Sweden have teetered back and forth for months, you know. Oh, from all I've heard, Boney's making tempting offers to them both. Uh, and Bernadotte's a Frenchman, after all. Uh, is there really any chance that they might join us, sir? They might, if we handle them sensibly. They have as much fear as we now Boney's gobbled up most of the continent. The die will be cast any day, we think. Uh, if we can show those Baltic powers some British naval strength to count on. I understand, sir. At any rate, we've got to keep the Baltic open for supplies. Mm -hmm. So much that we need here comes by those sea lanes. Well, are you ready? Is it settled? Yes, it's settled. Good. Now tell me, who would you like for captain of the nuns? Uh, I'd like to have Bush, sir, if he's available. I'd hate to go to sea without old Bush. I rather thought you'd ask for him. That wooden leg of his won't be a handicap to me. Oh, I think not, sir. You two have seen some things together, haven't you? First met as young lieutenants on the old renown. That's right, sir. Well, then, Bush it shall be. Now, then, let's walk across and see the Foreign Secretary. Be sure to have some secret orders for you. Time had come to say goodbye to Barbara. She drove with me from the small bridge to Deal Jetty. The Nunsuch and the five others of my pretty new squadron lay far offshore, half lost in morning mist. Brown was looking much too pleased. I had to take him down a little. Now, uh, stop mooning at those mastheads, Brown. Go hire the lugger man to take us out. Step live then, huh? Yes, Captain. Commodore, that is. Aye, aye, sir. Wind's veering norward a little. West by north, now, I think. Yes, dear. So you remarked as we were driving. I beg your pardon, dear. You were telling me about my shirts. I interrupted you. <laughs> no, I'd finished with the shirts. What I was saying was that all your cold weather things are in the flat sea chest. Mm -hmm. The sheepskin coat and heavy socks and mittens and... Oh, well, Brown understands. He also has in his care a certain little package. A surprise. Surprise, my dear? 
No, after all, I wouldn't try to surprise you. It's just a woolen neck scarf I'd be knitting for you. It's likely to be cold up in the Baltic, even now. Yes, I don't like cold. You're, you're very thoughtful. No, yes. I hope, I, I do hope so much that you'll be back before the winter. Well, so do I. I, <clears throat> I think of me, Barbara. I need you ask that. You'll write me everything. Mm. Everything, yes. won't you? Yes. The bad things, too, of course. Well, goodbye, Barbara. Goodbye. Come back to me. Come back to me. any witless wife of any common seaman. <laughs> if by some power of my own I could control French cannon shot. Hmm, but it made me love her all the more. It made my heart ache, too, that she should say such foolish things for all her pride and elegance. A little lugger pitched and rolled, a long trip all alone up to my ship. Oh, I could have let her come along. It would have done no harm. They'd seen me from the nun, such as we came tossing up the wind and laid into the big two-deckers, Lee. My old friend Bush, as captain, had turned the whole crew out full dress, and I was piped aboard with all the honors of a Commodore. The ship and every man aboard was in a state of polish. Bright brass work, thick side boys in white gloves, the whole Marine Guard and their band... A double lane of bosun's mates with pipes. <laughs> a childish display, perhaps some day it is, but well, it has its, uh, <clears throat> well, exhilaration somehow. And there was old Bush on the quarter deck, surrounded by his officers, all saluting stiffly. I had to check myself or I might actually have been. That, that would have been ruinous to discipline, so naturally I just stalked up the line and at salute. Morning, Captain Bush. Good morning, sir. Welcome aboard. Oh, sometimes since we've met, Captain Bush. You'll note uh, that your pennant's going up. Uh, Commodore's flag to designate your ship in the flotilla. Oh, uh, indeed. Well, <clears throat> well, Captain Bush, we shall get underway at once, if you don't mind. No time to lose. Be good enough to signal the others of the squadron. Aye, aye, sir. Very good. We sail on secret orders. I'll apprise you of their nature, Captain Bush, if you'll kindly dine with me this afternoon. You old sea urchin. <coughs> I, um, I shall be there, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Adams, pass the word to our five other ships. Underway at once and keep formation. Aye, aye, sir. Underway. Wrong, sir? Not good. Oh, I see you scouring off to starboard, sir. Uh, may I find you a glass? No. Is it the sloop? No, 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 no. It's nothing, Bush. <clears throat> no, I was just trying to make out the jetty. My wife's there. Hmm. Mist hasn't quite cleared yet, has it? Captain Bush will be dining with me here. Be sure the things come up hot from the galley, will you? Of course, sir. I've finished your unpacking. I trust it's satisfactory, sir. I um, placed the gift from Lady Barbara there on the um, bulkhead shelf. Yes, I, I saw it, Brian. Oh, it's a beautiful neck scarf, sir. Such fine, soft wool. Yes. I was um, to remind you to wear it, sir. Cold morning. Yes, yes, yes. All right. I'll, I'll consider it. Come in. Ah, Captain Bush. I'll go and bring your dinner, sir. Well, well, alone at last. Look, you know you had me grinning like some absurd schoolboy up there this morning. Uh, I was so proud, uh, so flattered that you'd ask for me, Horatio. I scarcely... Oh, come on, sit down. Our dinner will be coming any minute. Huh? I'm glad to see you, my old friend. Oh, well. Let's go down to things of more importance. Hmm? Ah, look, I've been studying my so-called secret orders and these charts. We're headed for the Skagerrak, my friend. I was inclined to think so, sir. Then through the Kattegat and up the Narrows. 
The Danes will resist, I suppose. Can't help themselves. Napoleon's on their back. And uh, what about the Swedes? That's just what no one seems to know. It's touch and go, apparently, with both the Swedes and Russians. We have to be prepared for anything. Kattegat Sound is only three miles wide part of the way. Mm -hmm. Sweden to port, Denmark to starboard. Yes, real mm -hmm. skiller and Charybdis, huh? Well, Bush, the powers that be have left decisions up to us, and we are going to have to improvise. Now, once we're off Göteborg, I... I'm going to try and pick up some fresh news on Swedish doings. Well, let's hope that Bernadotte is leading our way by then, sir. Yes, Bush. If not, we'll simply have to blast our way in somehow. Up through the North Sea into the Skagerrak. Scarcely a sail sighted off our bows the whole first week. Deserted waters, even in the Skagerrak off Denmark. Now and then we'd see a tiny fishing boat far off, none within hail. We had no news. We strained our eyes for some revealing sign. Had Bernadotte made up his mind by now? Were he and Russia enemies, neutrals, or, or even friends, if handled sensibly? Before sunrise, I found Bush on the quarterdeck. Well... Um. Still no news. Are we to run the gauntlet, then? We're nearing the Helsingborg Narrows. I wonder, Bush, how many guns are on that Swedish shore. Multitude, sir, you may be sure. The charts show a good dozen forts. Shouldn't we send the boat in, sir? Find out how Sweden stands? Well, last night I thought so, Bush. It has its logic, I admit. On the other hand, a, a boat would surely advertise our presence. But, sir, if both sides of the Kattegat are hostile... We could dash in the moment there is light enough to see the channel, surprise them, and, and perhaps get through, even if Sweden does resist. Yes, sir, but uh, then if Sweden has joined Bonaparte, won't we be bottled up inside the Baltic? Well, the Baltic is a sizable sea, Bush. I suspect we could maintain ourselves a while. Yes. Still almost an hour till dawn... That gives us time to clear our decks. Yes. I think we'll go in, Bush, this morning. An hour had passed. We came into the narrow channel just as the dawn broke in a dour gray mist. To starboard, hostile Denmark. To port, the riddle, Sweden. Was she our enemy? Well, we'd soon know, at all events. Are the guns run out, Captain Bush? Aye, aye, sir. And the fire pumps manned on every ship. Here's for it, then. Uh, what signal for hoisting to our other ship, sir? The signal is, proceed to leeward in battle order. Lotus shall lead. Lotus shall lead, sir, did you say? I did. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring up the rear, Bush, naturally. <laughs> Your face. <laughs> I know, I know. It's disappointing not to lead, but we're the shepherd of this little flock. We're the best built. The lead ships might get through before those shore gunners wake up. Hmm? They're awake already, hmm? Which shore fired that? The Danes. They've seen us, sir. Yes, there's a drift of smoke to starboard, see? That's where he's firing to starboard, Captain Bush. Yes, Mr. Adams, so I gather. By the way, did you know that those low cliffs are Elsinore, where Hamlet walked? I beg your pardon, sir. Yeah, never mind, never mind, We've no time now for literary small talk, have we? Signal to Lotus, Mr. Bush. Return the fire to starboard. We'll keep the exact station as Starn of the Harvey, if you please. I say, Lotus and Clam are giving back as good as they're getting, huh? They are, they are. Bush, Bush, this channel's full of shoals. I remember that from years ago. I remember too, sir. I put leadsmen in the chains. They'll sing out when we're reaching shallow water. Good, good. But the sloops and the three others don't draw as much as we Let me compliment you, Bush. You've thought of everything. Well, Brown? Your next sir. Oh, nonsense. In the midst of an action, how dare you come up here? It's and... very cold this early in the morning. Begging your pardon, sir. I had my orders. You'll recall. Uh, get below, Brown. All, all right, all right. Give me the scarf. Yes, the air is a bit chilly. With Elsinore abaft, the channel widened, and we were out of range from shore. There'd be about an hour, I reckon, before we reached the further narrows, a longer gauntlet to be run. And at its end, two Danish islands, Saltholm and Amagan. We had to pass between these, close to both. 
full daylight now. They'd see us coming. We could no longer profit by surprise. But anyhow, all hands at breakfast and relaxed and waited as I knew for the real test. An infernal din of guns broke out as we approached the channel. Oh, well, our starboard guns can speak together after all. Well done. I wasn't too sure about that, Delsino. A little ragged. So far, the Swedish guns had all stayed silent. And as if to make up for that, though, the Danes were throwing in everything they had at us. Salt home and wider waters seemed a very long way off. I found myself walking up and down. No, that wouldn't do. Indifference, Commodore. So I stood still and looked about me casually. Boys and deep, six and a half, six. Six fathoms are quite ample, aren't they, Bush, with the tide making? I think so, sir. I wouldn't care to risk less than five, though, just now. By the mark, six. Put another lift on the port chain quickly, Adams. Look, Bush, sword home and Amaga at last. See them rearing up ahead there? Both bristling, I'll be bound. Yes, smoke bursting from Amagar already. This tells the story, doesn't it? Salt home is where they keep their powder stored. And the hard boy! And the hard boy, sir! Saving a soul, that's certain. I hope. What? Now this is. And the old is it? Oh, name us, Tom. How's the trailing? Quarterless boy! Quarterless boy! They're nearing those souls, too. Harvey's quite helpless, eh? Yes, yes, I see. Oh, damnable luck, Bush. We'll be alongside her in a moment. Back the way, Jobs! Stand by on the heaving line, sir! Hold the lead! Yeah, that's speaking, Jobs. Aboard the Harvey there! Can you hear me? Aye, aye, sir. I'm Lieutenant Smith, sir. Anyone in charge, Mr. Smith? Lieutenant Mound, sir, knocked unconscious. Two men killed when the shell struck. We'll bring Mr. Mound aboard here, then. Send men down for him, Captain Bush. Put that ready to wait smartly and stand by to receive our line. What's that? Are we hit too? Our mizzen topmast's gone. Why the mark, boy? Why the mark, boy? Ah, that's better. We must be bearing off the show. Yeah, hit that one. The reaching is much too easily for salt home. I don't like it. Yes, sir. Short range. Uh, now that we're delayed... Now, look here. Those powder stores of theirs. Let's make a try for those. They might lie just beyond the highest fort. It seems fairly logical. Why not? But, sir, how do we know where to... Aye, aye, sir. Certainly. Mr. Adams, have starboard batteries raised tight. Try for a hit beyond that big red fort. Say, by... Uh, by... Uh, Fifteen yards. By Fifteen yards. Uh, pass the word, Adams, instantly. How about an extra fire? I'll get 15 yards past the right force. 15 yards past the right force. Wild idea, I suppose, Bush, but we simply can't sit here till the harbour is in tow. It's too much like duck hunting with the man such as the duck. And I... Fire! Ah! It's no good, sir. And the harbour's got us trapped under those guns. They'll sink her any minute, and us with her. Let's try another salvo, Bush. Twenty yards beyond the force this time. Pass the word, Adams. Twenty yards. How does it? Twenty yards past the same point. Ready? Not a bad afternoon. Harvey's in tow. Lotus took one poor hit. 
We have a hole or two in our own shrouds, but no ships lost. I shan't forget what we did to those powder stores and salt holes. Mm, yes, uh, that was a satisfactory moment. I'm a bit tired. Um, Adams, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Adams, has Mr. Mound been brought up yet? Yes, sir. He's off. Unconscious now. The sergeant's with him. Uh, I want to see him. Concussion and bad shoulder wound. Put in the blood about the patient's daughter. Take it easy. Well, here you are, Miles. Surgeon taking care of you, all right? Yes. Thank you, sir. Quite all right. We're taking you below to sick bay in a moment. I'm proud of all my young officers today, Miles. They're not too uncomfortable, I hope. Did all of us get through, sir? All our ships? That we did, Miles. What pleases me... Those Danish guns raked us with all they had, but not one shell from Sweden's coast. They're, they're not against us yet, at any rate. He's shivering at him. It's cold this afternoon. Here, put this scarf round his neck and shoulders. I don't need it. But, sir, he's bleeding at your scarf. Oh, come on, take it. <clears throat> oh, well, then I'll do it myself. Yeah. Isn't that better, man? Ah, yes, sir. Wonderful. Thank you. We hailed a fishing boat a few minutes ago, Marne. Found out the Blanche Fleur passed through the water yesterday. Big French corvette with at least 20 guns. She must be just ahead of us. Well, you'll have to get well quickly, Marne. Won't want to miss the fun, will you? Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers.